everybody, Steve Politi from NJ Advanced Media here at High Point Solutions Stadium for Episode 3 of Season 2 of Rebuilding Rutgers Podcast. I am joined, as always, by bedraggled beat writers, Keith Sargent, Ryan Dunleavy. We're all a little, all a little frayed around the edges after what was a difficult 16-13 to loss to Eastern Michigan, one of the worst losses we've seen here in a while. We'll talk about that at great length. I think we need to start immediately with the news of the day, though, that, that Jerry Kill is not with the team right now, uh, suffered a seizure on Sunday. Ryan, why don't, why don't you tell, just fill us in exactly what happened. So, according to what Chris Ash just told everybody at the press conference, uh, Jerry Kill had a seizure Sunday morning after he took a tumble and was discombobulated, was the word Ash used during the first half. Uh, Kill's on the sideline, not up in the press box, and a late hit out of bounds by an Eastern Michigan player on Kyle Bolin, and the Eastern Michigan players rolled up on Kill, and uh, he took a hit. Obviously, with Jerry Kill's history of seizures and epilepsy, that's what forced him to retire at Minnesota. Right, right. Uh, in May, I sat down with Jerry Kill and talked about epilepsy and how uh, he was trying to make a difference really in that world mm-hmm. just as much as he was in coaching. And he'd said at the time in May that he had been seizure-free for something more than a year, 16 months about or so. Right. So I can't speak for May till now, but it had obviously been a long time since he's had one. And at, to be clear, Ashley called a minor seizure mm-hmm. and said that Jerry would be out of the hospital soon. But right. obviously huge cause for concern for – the Kill family. Right, and, and I guess you mentioned that Mike, he'll, he, if he's back with the team and he can, again, set that example for, for seizure patients, it's, it's good news. I guess the concern is, though, if he, if he if this happens again, here we are back at the same position. Yeah, I mean, I've done a lot of actually reporting on, on epilepsy, and, and there was a Rutgers tennis uh, player, player not so long ago who actually had it. She was a really good player, uh, one of the better pl- players on the team, and I remember doing a story, and uh, turned out that she actually had him during matches, during practices, wow. and it's a scary deal. I mean, you know, anyone who, who you know, I'm sure the coaches who, who were in the meeting, you know, when, when, when it happened, it's a scary deal. But the point is, uh, people can ba- bounce back from it. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, I remember talking to the, to this player, and she wanted to play. You know, she got back up. You know, after like 10 minutes or whatever, and wanted to continue her match. Obviously, you know, the coach said no. We're going to take the rest of the afternoon off. But this is not something that's you know. Right. I, I would expect Jerry uh, Chris Ash said that he expects him to to, to coach this week. Yeah, I would expect that that to be the case. I guess I, I, two two things spring to mind. First, overwhelming thoughts for him and his health. First and foremost, but the thought that pops in my mind is, my gosh, why can't this team just catch a break? You know, this is some. This is again, this is a guy who came in here who was such an important, uh, you know, leader. Uh, and I know he was a program changing hire. Absolutely, I know fans are frustrated with the offense right now, but I mean, this isn't. <laughs> this was an excellent hire by Chris Ash, an important person, an experienced head coach. Uh, you know, one of the b- smartest football men to walk into that building, mm, yeah. and so for this to happen to him, you know, you hope. And then the second thought is, you. You, know, you wonder, all right, are we going to be back? And I know you know you don't want to jump to here yet, but are we going to be back picking the ninth offensive coordinator in nine years? And that that would just be devastating for this because I really think they they like Coach Kill and they think he's going to be the guy who who can make a make an impact on this team. Well, look, I remember the first press conference. We spent like probably fifteen minutes on that teleconference, and I remember probably half of it was about his health. Mm-hmm. And I remember feeling uncomfortable after it, but at the same time, it's kind of a logical question because right. you know the the best offensive coordinator in the last five ten years maybe was Ralph Friesian he'd still be here if it wasn't for his health issues so it it, it is a legitimate question probably for another day right. let's see how he bounces back from it but yeah it's a question that we could probably ask that you know at another time okay uh let's let's recap uh let's recap the Eastern Michigan game Blah. Uh, uh, yeah <laughs> well, then we're done no, there you go we, we figured finished it up uh I'm gonna call this first segment uh, and and because I know that there's a lot of, if you're still listening now to this podcast, clearly you are a fan who needs a little little jolt yeah, of optimism. Yeah. And who better than NJ.com <laughs> to, provide, to give you <laughs> that good vibrations because that's really what our reputation is. So I'm going to call the first segment, Trust Us, You Can Take Off the Eclipse Glasses Now. And I guess what I want, if I'm a fan right now, and Morgan State's coming in here, you know they're going to win. You know... What is the reason? This is only week two. It's just depressing. You're 0 2. You've lost to a team you should beat. Give me one reason to show up for that game if you're a fan and watch. What positive thing do you, can you see from this team? You're going to see them win. I right, mean, I think right. that's the number one thing. But beyond that, I think you're going to see them win. I think you're going to see everything you want to see. Almost like 
a practice. You're going to see they should, you know, put up 40 points, 50 points. You They should shut them out. Everything you want to see from a dominant performance, I mm-hmm. think you'll get that. I think they're hyper-focused. I think, you know, this is the perfect p- opponent to, for lack of a better word, bully and just kind of push around on all mm-hmm. sides of the ball. I think if you're a diehard fan who wants to see a dominating performance, listen, if Rutgers only wins this game 21-3 or something, that's not going to be good enough for <laughs> right, most of the right. fans. I think you'll see I, the numbers are ridiculous, right? Rutgers has outscored their one double A opponents like 300 and something to 40 something over the last 10 years. I think you're just going to get another one of those mm-hmm. games where they look far superior on every side of the ball. Sarge. I want to look. I want to see the the freshman, the Ballyhooed freshman, yeah. you know, on offense. And I'm not talking about Jonathan Lewis. <laughs> we will see right. Jonathan yes. Lewis, I'm yes. sure. But how about Raheem Blackshear? Yeah. You know, who looked pretty good right. in, in in that week one game. Right. But so a, yeah. No, I'll say Blackshear because if you remember how Rutgers got him, they got him late in the yeah. recruiting process. They they got him pretty much because they had a decommitment. Jonathan Taylor, who ended up at Wisconsin, who had a great game yeah, right. this past right. week. Uh, yeah, you know, I don't know what he finished with. He had 150 mm-hmm. yards at halftime. He had a great game. You know, he was one that got away from South Jersey. Raheem Blackshear. You know, Rutgers uh, flipped him from from Michigan State. I want to see him. Great point. Yeah, yeah he's a good change of pace. The, the running game hasn't been great. Yeah. Um, you know, can he get involved and maybe uh, be someone that they could right. count on this year? Great point. And we mentioned they're playing a lot of freshmen. Wormley has uh, Melton, but those, Fog, but those guys don't have any stats in the box score. And that's what fans, I think, want to see is right. that Wormley has one catch. Bo Melton doesn't have a catch. They're playing, which is nice, but I think fans want to see the stats when they see Jonathan mm-hmm. Taylor's stats at Wisconsin, when they see Amir smith Marset make the game-winning touchdown catch for Iowa, a guy who decommitted from Rutgers pretty much on signing day last year. Uh, Rutgers fans want to see their guys now. The kids who did stay, who were loyal, get some stats next to their names, not just snaps. Right. For me, it goes beyond. I, I don't. There's nothing I need to see if I'm a fan from this game. They're going to win it. They're going to win it easily. No one should pat themselves on the back when they do. I want to I want to see a baseline going forward if I'm a fan. I want to be able to watch this game and say, okay, this is what I've got here in September. Now, I want to, I want to be here because I'm a loyal fan. I'm going to be here till November, and here's how this team got better for these next. That's the only thing that matters right now. You want to see the young, the young players improve. You want to see the team get better. You want to see some sense that, okay, this thing's going in the right direction because you might not see it in wins losses now. So, yeah. you know, if you're, if you're a diehard fan and you watch this team closely, I think you want to come, if you're going to come out to see that. And let's go to the next segment because – I don't think anybody's coming out. And this is, I'm going to call this the, where did this segment do? Where did everybody go? And we were talking about it during the Eastern Michigan game. And I guess we saw it coming, but the Washington attendance was better than we expected. Um, you know, the stadium was half full or half empty, depending on your perspective. Uh, you know, against, and it was announced crowd of, I think 37,000, 37 and change. I don't know if we quite got there. Um, I mean, let's talk about that now. You know, we, Ryan, you 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 are <laughs> a different opinion us when we were talking about the press box. Do you think fans should get some criticism for not being here? You only get six games a year. I mean, what, what do you think? I mean, I think yeah, I think they need to be here. That I mean, that's pretty much how I feel. I mean, I I know that there's a lot of talk about like you know the the team's not very good, and I think the uh, idea that there's a lot of things to do. But hey, the running joke we all make, right, is if it's 75 degrees. Rutgers fans or 80 degrees Rutgers fans go to the shore and if it's 65 degrees it's too cold to come to the game <laughs> so like if it's 72 degrees I'm coming to the Rutgers football game yeah. that, to me they, they have to come to the games I mean that the other either you have to come to the games or you have to stop complaining that the fundraising isn't there the facilities right. aren't there the recruits don't come it's one or the other if you don't want to support the team then you have to understand why the recruits don't want to come or why because mm-hmm. they don't want to see a half empty stadium or why the donors don't want to donate or whatnot like or you support the team and then you have every right to, if you're here every Saturday you have every right to complain about everything that's going yep. on I so think I think they have a fan base that's historically a 30 to 35 40,000 fan base and when they're really good they get get uh, upwards in the, in the high 40s but you know if you look at this you know Correct. program historically this is a 35 to 40,000 uh, fan base and mm-hmm. you know that's what it is the other thing i will say is you know, I just look at there's so many things in New Jersey, and I I know uh, I'll let Ryan I'm have his counter argument. <laughs> I know you're shaking your head, 
but I'll just you know put in from my perspective. You know, Saturday morning, you know, I I went to you know my daughter's uh, soccer game, and and you know it was packed. I couldn't even get a parking spot. This was ten o'clock in the morning. There's a lot of soccer leagues you know throughout throughout the state. State. You know, my, I asked my buddy if he wanted to go to the game. I was going to uh, try to get him a ticket. And he said he was going apple picking. There's a lot of things to do in the fall. <laughs> and, <laughs> That's great. And, and, and my wife oh. went down, down to Oceanport, uh, down to, to Ocean Grove. Get some uh, nice honey is, crisp. Yeah, it was it was gorgeous. It was a gorgeous day. It's just I, I'm sorry. Right. Do they not have apples in soccer in Nebraska? Do they not? They have do on apples? Friday. <coughs> here's what they I'm going to say. And they have not have apples in soccer. And some of these places. Here's the thing, Steve. Right. So like you're going to tell me there's nothing else to do in Lincoln, Nebraska. There's nothing else to do in. <laughs> <laughs> in you know, Champaign, Illinois. That's what everybody's going to tell me, right? You're a North Carolina. You're, you're North. You spent time in North Carolina. There's shores and beaches in North Carolina. Do people go to the football games? Do they go to Duke football games? Do they go to North Carolina yeah, football sometimes. games? Do they go to <laughs> Do they go to South Carolina football games? Right. There's a beach in South Carolina. If we don't want to compare it to the rest of the Big Ten, right. how about other five, Power Five teams? Do people go to the games or do they go to uh, Rocky Mount, North Carolina, or whatever, wherever the beach is? What's the place everybody goes? Uh, um, you get the point. My right. point is, like, there's o- there's other nice weather somewhere. P- Northwestern's outside of Chicago. There's here's other the, things to do other places. Right, here's the counterpoint that I would make. And believe me, I was I was I was screaming out the press box window when they, they were seven and zero. Kent State's here, and the stadium's now full. You know, like, why are you? Wh- what are you waiting for? My counterpoint now is that Nebraska has never gone two and ten and lost seventy eight nothing at home. You know. I can't fault anybody for not wanting to spend their disposable income on the game I saw on Saturday. It was I, I liken it to pouring battery acid on your eyes. It was just <laughs> yeah. it was unwatchable. It was the first game. quarter lasted an hour because college football games yeah. are just. I saw a bad. I saw. I went to a bad NFL game in Dallas when the Giants played. It was it was nineteen thirteen. It was an awful, poorly played game. But it was over in two hours and forty five minutes. Not, College football can't figure it out. So my point be, my point is here that, you know, if I just can't blame anybody for not wanting to spend their money on a product that quite frankly sucks. It's their entertainment value is low. It's your money. You only got so many hours in a week. <laughs> you know, I'm sorry. I, I, I blame them when they weren't here when the team is, was good and rising. Right now, I'm sorry. If, you, if you're not showing up, I, I, I can't hold it against you. One correction. I think it was 19-3. to 3. I think the 13 was your win total for the Giants. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, you, blew me, you blew me up on that one. <laughs> I deserve that. Uh, so, all right. So, do you think that this is the next question? Will it be? Will it be a respectable crowd on on, on Saturday? No, no, no. no. I, I, there's nothing that I've seen in years. Going, like you said, going back to when they were good in 2012. Mm-hmm. Nothing what I've seen that makes me think that right. th- this team is going to be good. Which, Sarge? Yeah, and I, I've just seen the Rutgers base uh, fan base historically going back to basketball. You know, I remember back in the day, you know, they would come for like Syracuse or, right. or Georgetown, all the like the big marquee games, and then yeah, you know, when if they were playing a game that they were supposed to win, they wouldn't show up. I, I kind of equated to this. I mean, you know, this is a game where they're going to win. Like Ryan said, if you want to watch Rutgers yeah. win, come to this game, but no, I, I, I think that they're just going to they, – right. they come for the opponent. All right, last word for you, Dunleavy. We're go. staring out at the stadium right now, yeah. the three of us. That that end zone that used to be open that Greg Schiano forced that stadium <laughs> expansion be open. through. <laughs> and you, what, you wonder, right? I yeah. mean, the crowd, the stadium would look a lot more full right. if it was – if that end zone was open and everybody else was here, but probably wouldn't be in the Big Ten without Absolutely that stadium true. expansion. So it's the everlasting mm-hmm. question. All right, third segment, and then let's get back to let's get back to the nuts and bolts football stuff. Uh, you know, I'm going to call us. We're all pretend we're Bill Walsh for a minute here. What's the solution on offense? And and you know, I mean, aside from the obvious, get better players. If there's one thing, two things, anything that you see that could just make this team better, uh, what would it be, Ry? To me, it's the game plan. The first week was pretty much all conservative. Right. This past week, I felt like it was all or nothing. And by that, I mean, like, it was somewhat predictable, like, run the ball up the middle for three yards, run the ball up the middle for four yards, then throw a 40-yard pass that didn't work out because the offensive line or an inaccurate throw or a receiver ran a res- ran a bad route. Where's the, like, 10 to 15-yard in route? Mm-hmm. Where's the slant? Where's the comeback route? To me, that's what's missing. Like, get the ball out of – get these, like, middle – 
medium routes into the hands of Janarian Grant, into the hands of Jay Harris, into the hands of Damon Mitchell. It's kind of what Rutgers did in the last six minutes of the game was just kind of Kyle Boland was like a point guard, just distributing the ball. And they didn't score on either drive, obviously, but they were able to move the ball a little bit. Right. And you can't tell me Eastern Michigan was playing prevent defense in the last six minutes because it was only they were only up three. This wasn't like a 30 mm-hmm. point. This wasn't like Eli Manning piling up yards last night. This was in a close game. He was firing the ball real quick. That's what I want to see. Those me Medium routes, not long developing plays downfield, and not the obvious predictable handoff up the middle. Sorry, you got uh, to piggyback off that. I mean, predict- uh, predictability. I think first down is critical. First and second down, getting you know, it sounds you know, it's logical, but third down offense was awful this past week. They were oh, yeah. four four for sixteen. You know, I think that's that's the other thing. And getting a lead, you know, getting a lead because I, I I did see on Twitter some, some someone pointed it out that if if they can play from ahead. And like let the run game because we saw in the third quarter. I think you even asked Coach Ash after the game about you know just them being able to, to bang away in the third quarter. I I still think that they could uh, you know win a couple of these Big Ten games if they could play ahead and play their style and you know and and you know let the running game try to take over in the third and fourth quarter. Right, and we saw that, and and I, I really like like the how physical this team was with the running game. But the problem with that is, of course, they just. Clearly, they, they were so afraid of passing at that point, even in the third quarter against Eastern Michigan. I really want to see this, and I could be wrong. I want to see that. I want to let these young receivers go. You, you brought Bo Melton into this program. He, he came in with the, with a high reputation, a four star recruit. Let's let's let let's let these kids go out. And he there. was open. He, he was, was open, open on a couple that first of times. shot. On that first shot that they, they, they let's they, get they them involved. Be. You know what Grant is? He looked great in the fourth quarter. Great, nearly saved this team in the fourth quarter. Obviously, you need him more involved. But, you know, from what I've seen from the wide receivers, I, you know, I'm ready for a personnel change and to see some of the kids play. And I don't think they have anything to lose to put those kids out there. Um, all right. You ready for true or false? Oh, ready. Oh, goody. My favorite segment. favorite segment from the one guy who messaged me about it. And he messaged me again to say that he heard this. So I hope he messaged me again to point out <laughs> that I said it again. I will say a fan stopped me on the street. Uh, a shout out to this guy because he's probably listening. Could uh, be listening. That's yeah, the other guy. Saw and said, really like the podcast. It feels like I'm sitting at the bar with that's my three great. buddies. And that's to me, that's what exactly I wanted. Exactly. And we all, we, all three of us are liquored. Okay. Uh, <laughs> true or false? Answer that only. We'll discuss points at the end. Uh, first question, Rutgers will win more than two games. True or false, Dunleavy? More than two games. False. Sarge. True. Okay, down there. Uh, the announced crowd for Saturday will clear 30,000. True or false? True. False. Wow. When was lost the man? We'll save it. (laughs) Jonathan (laughs) Lewis will throw more than one pass against Morgan State. True or false? True. False. Oh, false. That's depressing events. Uh, Robert Martin should start over Gus Edwards. True. False. 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 Morgan State, shut out in its first two games, will score points against Rutgers. Ryan. True. Sarge. False. The secondary is still the best position group on this team. Ryan. False. Wow. False. Wow, both of you. Uh, Rutgers will atone for this loss with an upset when people won't expect. Ryan. True. True. Really? Okay. We'll have to decide what to define upset. Uh, <laughs> this is the most baffling Rutgers loss you've ever seen. Ryan. Fall. <laughs> Sarge. Fall. I've seen a lot of us. <laughs> we'll get to that one, too, because that's fun. Uh, the 2017 season can still be considered a success for this team. Ryan. False. Wow. True. All right, let's get to let's to write that. So you wait, think wait, right wait, one now, second. Uh, by the way, it's pro, uh, pro, uh, pro, projected to rain on Saturday. So that's <laughs> oh, one, it. one thing that's going on. Holy, I should have gone for 20,000 then. All right, so you say you <laughs> say the said announced. You say the 2017 season can't be a success. I Why just, not? I don't see it. Unless you're telling me they're going to beat one of the big teams, Penn State, Ohio State. Oh, they're going to have some major victory where that nobody will ever forget. Yeah. Unless you're telling me that can happen. If you're telling me they're going to beat Indiana, Purdue, Maryland, really? Illinois, one of the one, two of those teams, to me, it still doesn't make up. You disagree? If, if they win two uh, Big Ten games, that's if they beat success. Illinois and Purdue, and they lost to Eastern Michigan, and they yeah. go one three and nine, that's a successful season. Oh, I yeah, I, I agree that's with Sergeant. Absolutely, right. that would be. And if you, if you beat if you beat Purdue, if you beat Illinois, yeah. 
yeah. and Purdue, and you're and three Morgan and State. nine. And, and Morgan, you. so you're three and nine, and you're and you're competitive. You're pl- you're playing well against Maryland at the end. Yep. I mean, it's not believe me. You're not going to throw a parade, but at least you say, okay, well, you, you were better than last year. You're heading in the right direction. So I mean, I, you know, that's better than last year. Yeah, <laughs> but a success. I don't know. Maybe it's maybe it's one of those defined success. Right. But to me. To, to call it a success after you lost Easter Mission. And, and yet, didn't you well, say... Would, would 4-8 and eight have been a success? I said they could atone for it. Like, you said, balance it out. You could yeah. balance... You said yeah. you, you think they could... Well, so what I, do you think? Well, what would I count think, as an upset, upset at this point? Would it be... It, beating one of Indiana or Maryland. Okay. I, th- I think they'll do it. And I think they'll finish probably 2-10. and ten. <laughs> Wow. So you think they're going to lose... Morgan State and one of those games... They're going to lose to both Illinois and Purdue. One of those games. Okay, 3-9. Right. and nine. Three But nine. again, I still, that still doesn't... That still doesn't feel success I picked 4-8, and eight, so I can't say 3-9 right. is a success. Right. I can't. Fascinating. All right. Uh, the other point was, you did not think... Who did not think that, that Jonathan Lewis would throw one more pass? I mean, God, if you don't... Sarge. You can't... I love... I want to see the kid play. I, I, I don't want to see the probably, kid get a handle. He, he will probably do it. It's just... I'm so down on, you know, we went into the year thinking, looking at the, the Tyler and Odin experiment, and every single time he got the ball, he ran, it, he ran the ball. Right, right. And we kept on asking Drew Manager throughout the entire year, can you know, he throw, can he the, throw ball? the ball? And he's like, oh, yeah, he did. And then right. he, he wouldn't do it. He wouldn't do it. And when, again, he's going to throw the ball more than once. But my point is, when you're in the press box, and I will give Ryan Dunleavy credit because on that second play, can we, we he that? called it. He said right before the play, "Here's going to be the play," and it wasn't like you know the the other thirty thousand fans in attendance, you know, probably didn't have the same feeling beforehand. But when you can predict the play before before they actually run it, it's not a that's a, that's a problem. No. So he will throw the ball more than more, more than once. But at the same time, I'm really he's going to take a lot of snaps. But if he's going to be able to take off and run, I think we were all impressed with Odin the first time we ever saw him against Howard last year. Yeah. Why? Because he had like eight carries for 60 yards. And we're like, oh, wow. Yeah. We ignored the fact that he only threw the ball like right. once in that game because he just – it's all about the kid, right? Whatever Rutgers calls, whatever Jerry Kill or whoever's calling the mm-hmm. plays on Saturday calls, it's going to be about the kid. And if the kid's going to drop back and see running room and his first instinct is to run, then right. he's not going to throw more than one pass. Right. Yeah. And, and if I he's think- a quarterback of the future, he needs to throw the ball. He, he needs does. to. And the three of us – are in agreement, I think, that, that Kyle Boland should still start for this team at this point. Correct. I, yes. And I think we are in the minority as far as the fans go who want to see a change already, which is crazy. But that said, I, I do want to see that. The kid has to have a series or two. I want to just not, not – I want more than not, that. Just to put him in, not take him out. I want to see him play. Yeah. Yeah. Take, this, your offense is here. This is it. Go. Second quarter. I, well, I, I, quarter. I don't second even quarter. want to see – here's my here's what I would do. This is interesting too. So you say second quarter. You say give him se- sporadic two series. series. I, I say this. Take a twenty-eight nothing lead in the first half, like you should do, and then give okay. them the whole second half. If you can do that, that's even yeah, better. But then in, in the that's second half, then you're you're not going to be really running it up in the you know late in the third quarter. I want to see him in the second quarter when when the game has some meaning. You have the first team offensive line. I want to see him in the I second quarter. I don't think Rutgers is too concerned about running it up on anybody. I think if they can beat Morgan State 78 nothing, I think they'd be happy to do that. Right, we've extended this this segment far too long, but because it is an interesting point that we discussed it and people were, oh my, I can't believe they lost these in Michigan. What is what what would you put as your most baffling loss you've seen in 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 a, in a few in a few sentences here? I, I mean, I ranked 14 of them. I saw that. Uh, we had a debate as to what counted. That's, yeah. how, that's how complicated it was. We had to split it, it into two yeah. categories. There's been uh, so many. We had to split it into right. you lost to who and you lost that game. Yep. To me, the most ba- – I'll give you two, for one from each category. Uh, to me, the most baffling loss is um, Cincinnati in 2006 mm. when the team was at its best. That's the most – that was Rutgers at its absolute uh, best, off its absolute high. I, tell you, I was there that night. It did, did not seem baffling at the time. Yeah. It, it, it was disappointing, but yeah. baffling is a different. And then to me, the most baffling, and I was here as a student, actually. <laughs> I think I was in the crowd. Um, <laughs> is the, the most baffling of all bafflings is the New Hampshire loss in 2004. Um, right. To lose to a... One du- to lose to a one double A team. Off. Remember, yeah. people thought the right. the Rutgers Michigan State win in two thousand four against a Big Ten team. They thought that was 06 Louisville at the time. They yep. thought that was their breakthrough national. They brought here down the goalposts, right? Yeah. Yeah. here we come. This yeah. is our national record sized crowd <laughs> at Rutgers football. They thought that was their moment. They luckily for them, they got it two years later against right. Louisville. But to go from that 
to lose to New Hampshire two weeks later, that I just thought was, was probably the most baffling. Sorry. Yeah, you always live in a moment. Um, the New Hampshire game really can, kind of stands out because it was this situation where they had beaten Michigan State the week before, and then you know, the final week they, they laid an egg. But I just want to l- l- let you know, I, I went back. <laughs> the last time they were 0-2, I, I, I went back to the archives. I'm reading this uh, this uh, columnist for, for the Star Ledger at the time. <laughs> oh, good. good. And, and he wrote that um, – you know, he that he call, he said the list of worst losses in school history is is a long one, but Thursday night deserves a spot in the conversation. That mm-hmm. was the North Carolina game, which I remember it, it was when they started zero two. Yep. If you remember, they they opened with with, with game Fresno. Was supposed to be really and, good. Yeah, when they they lost to Fresno and then they lost forty four to twelve list. to North Carolina. <laughs> Ryan didn't even put it on his list. Yeah. that's why that's where I'm saying you're living the here and now. It's, it's true. It's, it's yeah. Bad bad loss, but. You know, a little perspective. They've lost a lot of games like this. It's a bad yeah. loss, but, you know, I don't know if it ranks. The funny part about that North Carolina, I mean, the, the problem was that it was the point where you think that Chano had gotten everything yeah. he wanted. Yeah. He got the state yeah. facilities. He had the players, and you're like, well, how could you still be yeah. losing? The loss that sticks out to me, and we spent too much time on this, but it's just it was interesting to go back, was, was looking back at that stretch in 2002 when they lost to Villanova and Buffalo, and Buffalo came in here as easily the I mean the worst mm-hmm. team in college football and won thirty four to eleven. Yeah. We forget and they're only like, you know, ten thousand people in the big forget just how bad those teams were under Shiano. We are not there. As I wrote my column, it yeah. it could be worse. It's always worse. It's always a worse situation. One thing to throw on top of the New Hampshire and New Hampshire game is it has a lasting legacy. Rutgers is playing Morgan State this week, as Sarge knows, because after they lost to New Hampshire, Shiano said, never again. Yep. Never again are we playing a team <laughs> yep. from whatever, what is that conference? With Delaware yep. and New Hampshire. <laughs> Miak. Miak, Miak, Miak. And, and we now had 13 years of Morgan State and Howard. <laughs> His and legacy AG. continues. It's great. <laughs> All right. We, there's a next segment. Uh, it's a problem. For, unfortunately, we have not pissed off any big, fan, big Ten fan bases this week. We will try harder next week to do so. We'll go straight to mean tweets. Uh, we had plenty of those, fortunately, and the vast majority of them were from Rutgers fans, which is what you would expect. Uh, but by far, my favorite one was from <laughs> Are You United, as in Night at 18, who was in this long discussion about whether or not this podcast does in fact suck, which could be the case. <laughs> but there was a long discussion, jumps in, jumps into this discussion, and says... And I quote, and can you guys dress like you are in the number one media market, please? (laughs) Nirvana-esque flannel shirts went out in the 90s. Not a good look at all. (laughs) How does he know what we're wearing? (laughs) I give give him a lot of credit because we are slobs. We're, We're, you know, we're sports writers. But I mean, we're not, I'm not wearing a flannel shirt. That's just mean. Well, That's to a your mean credit, thing. I mean, you're wearing right now. No one can see us, but you're wearing a, a, a tuxedo <laughs> with a top hat. The top hat really. That's you know, how kinda... I travel when I come back from road games. Exactly, but no. Uh, yeah, that was what I thought was just a very, a very <laughs> good, high quality mean tweet. I'll throw out a couple. You got any? Freezing cold takes, which I've now <laughs> appeared on quite a few times. I'm a freezing love, cold takes. I love that guy. He retweeted a tweet I sent out from August 31st, 2016, that said, Kirk Herbstreet on Rutgers, they have a chance to be a pain in the butt in Big Ten play. That was my and, story. Yeah, and they quote tweeted it with, Rutgers is 2-12 and 0-9 and and in the Big Ten yeah. since this quote. Wow. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And Kirk Herbstreet said it. It wasn't you who said it. I'll give it to M- at Michigan underscore 1974. Nice. Did you guys get Eastern Michigan's roster? That's obviously wow. a jab because of yep. all the time we spent trying to get Michigan's roster. That's pretty good. good. Um, and as long as we're, people are ripping us for shirts, I got this one, too. <laughs> um, this was pretty good. From WFRIED85. Uh, wondering why you didn't get an NJ.com story pregame? Ryan Dunleavy finishing off a plate of wings. That's why. And it's a photo of me eating at a ta- my mother-in-law's tailgate before a game, which apparently I'm not allowed he, to do. Wait, he, to- pop- he stalked you? Paparazzi style. You got stalked like, at pop- the tailgate? Paparazzi eating style shot wow. of me, like a profile shot of me from probably two or three tailgates over eating and talking to my mother-in-law. That's impressive. Apparently, I'm Good not job allowed- by that guy. Not allowed to do Good that. Good job apparently. by that guy. That's pretty mean. <laughs> 
just uh, I, I'm I'm going back to re- reading this 2000, 2008 column by Steve Politi, and I'm just fascinated by it too. It's not a mean tweet, <laughs> but I can't get get off the story because two things: they, there was the last time they were owned to. They played Navy the following week. Everyone remembers they lost at Navy, and then they, they played did. Morgan State, which you know right. history repeats itself. And then this paragraph here. Because this was, you know, the, the following off season after Shiano turned down Michigan, this was a, uh, your, your line in the in, in the column. To think Michigan hoping Shiano would leave Piscataway last winter to take the reins in Ann Arbor. Right now, Eastern Michigan wouldn't bring him in for an interview. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that is wow, that is mean. mean. That is mean. God, wow, yeah. I wrote that. If you would have tweeted that, you would be on this list right wow. now. The mean tweets Ooh, of the week. I would be on. Okay, well. That's good. I think this, let's let's not have a segment reading back my old columns, though, please. <laughs> all right, let's go to predictions. I mean, we know we all know. Again, I know you're disappointed in the program if you're a fan, but they're going to beat Morgan State. It's going to be a big win. Um, what, what do you want to do? Want to predict one player you'd like to see more of? Do you want to predict what what? Say, well, how do you want to make this prediction good? What, how about we do that? Can we do? Can we do one player or one thing you want to see more of, or that we will see more of in this game? How about Gus Edwards got 100 yards? Because I remember going into, you know, that that was one of my predictions. I think I said 150 maybe even in the opener. Mm-hmm. Um, he hasn't, he wasn't great this past week. And, uh, you know, how about really to run game in general, just dominate and, you know, because this is clearly, this is what they're going to hang their hat on. Can they, can they, everyone wants to see, you know, the, the right. Kyle Bowen go for 300 or, you know, the, but can they have a game where it kind of sets the tone for, you know what, this is the type of team Rutgers are going to be. They're going to be a team that dominates, you know, on the, on the ground. Can they, can they get Robert Martin and Gus Edwards on track? Yeah. I'm not the kind of journalist who will, uh, Say that I knew something and then write it like three weeks later. Who, who would, uh, I, I haven't seen uh, that. I don't do know. Other people so do I, that. Some people do that. Really, I'm not the kind of guy who does huh, that. Okay, but um, that's interesting because they would think that if you knew it, <laughs> it you would write, you would write it, it at, that, at yeah. that point when you did in fact know it. Yeah. yeah okay. Uh, but huh. I do. But I do think that there's been we we've spent so much time writing about Kamoko Ture and is Kamoko Ture going to get all these sacks <laughs> and. Where was Shamoko Ture in this game? I mean, we felt like he was all over the field against Washington. Where was he against Eastern Michigan? I, w- I want a snap count on him because I don't even know how much he played. That's a great point. To me, I want to see a lot of Kamoko Ture. I know the stacks don't really matter if he gets six against Morgan State, but I want to see him disrupt. I want to see him own this game like he's the yeah. best player on the field. I'll, so. go, I'll go defensively too. Let's see Let's see a pick six. Let's oh. see a defensive score. Let's see this secondary. We, if it's good as you think, if bless Austin, you know, if these kids are as good as, you know, we think they are. Let's let's see a kid uh, take take one back to the house and, and, and really, you know, and, and def- I want to see uh, the, def- the defense not just make an impact in this game and shut them out, but to score some points. All right. What else do we got? Anything? That's it. That's it. Week three's over. I, we'll be back here next week. I promise we'll be talking about a victory. It'll be much more upbeat. <laughs> we'll be previewing, we'll be Nebraska, previewing Nebraska, which uh, is no longer winnable. We're no longer winnable. You gave we'll up on the winnable. Right now. I gave up on the winnable. But we'll see. We'll see. Maybe, they, maybe the whole entire state will be hit by some sort of terrible calamity. All right. Uh, that's it for us. Signing off. Thanks for listening.